heading to Mexico to use myself as a human guinea pig. Let me explain. Today I'm going to attempt to climb one of the highest peaks in North America. It's over 17,000 feet. Now typically to climb a peak this high, I would need over a week to acclimatize. I'm going to attempt to do it in less than 48 hours. And because this is dangerous and this climb has a little bit of a twist, I'm going to seek a doctor's opinion first. Ken Kamler is considered one of the foremost high altitude doctors in the world. He has literally saved lives on Mount Everest. So the itinerary has us um, flying to 8,000 feet Mexico City, right. going immediately to 10,000 feet, mm -hmm. and then uh, in another day going to 15 and then summiting at 17 too. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, Rich, I think that's a crazy plan. I think you're on a suicide mission here. So when you arrive at 8,000 feet, your body mechanisms are going to be breathing deeper to take in more air and moving it faster. So you'll have a higher pulse and deeper breath. You'll be out of breath. Now those are the only adaptations you can do immediately. And if you try to go beyond 8,000 feet, uh, your body just can't do it on the short term. You need more time to adapt to a higher altitude. What Ken doesn't know is that I've been working in a high altitude chamber for the past several weeks. One of the dangers of high altitude mountaineering is altitude sickness. Now what I'm going to do here under supervised conditions is simulate high altitude. Some of you may have heard of the term as the death zone. In mountaineering that's at approximately 23,000 feet, it's where the body doesn't have enough oxygen to sustain life and you slowly begin to die. Now I'm going to put this mask on and simulate 21,000 feet. I'll only be able to do it for a few minutes, but what you should be looking for in me, my eyes might start getting a little buggy, lips may turn blue, may start trembling, and I'll get generally dizzy. Let's see how it goes. The chamber has enabled my body to adapt to 13,000 feet while I work. Pretty cool, huh? Now before I go to Mexico, I want you to see what life without oxygen is like. Watch what happens when I put on a death mask. My pulse is already up above 170, which is high for altitude. And I'm starting to get I'm starting to get a little wobbly here. Right now my eyes are having a very hard time with the light and focusing. I was in the area just below the death zone for about 20 minutes and uh, I can feel sea level air rushing to my lungs but if I would have tried to stay there longer I would have been risk of dying. Luck may not be all he needs. A nice warm blanket and some serious protection from the elements might also come in handy. Stay tuned. Climbing mountains can be dangerous, painful and exciting all at the same time. Okay, I'm getting ready to get out of my sleeping bag for the big, big climb today. Um, never really sleep all that much. In fact, probably slept like a couple hours, but I figured that much. Um, it's pretty cold and windy out there. Hey, I'm feeling okay, going slow, but I'm feeling okay. Just about to head to the, the belly of Ixtasi Waddle. And uh, if you look just down over there, you can see her belly. We've got just about a half hour below the summit. The sun has come out. The wind is sort of calmed down. I'm actually getting a little warm here. Ah, 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 ah. Well, mission accomplished. Um, we proved that we could go to high altitude by training at sea level. 
maybe this doesn't necessarily change the face of expiration, but it's certainly adding another tool. And uh, oh, I'm tired now. I just want to go home. But I'll see you next week.